Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Soterio Stasinopoulos. Um, Mary uh, was going to introduce me, but the network, I guess, is not the best. Um, I am the founder and CEO of Popular Robotics. Uh, it's the company that is bringing you this webinar today. Uh, and our main uh, tool for you to use is our online platform called Robocity. Uh, you can use Robocity for many different purposes. Uh, you can uh, get access to online education about robotics and AI. You can uh, get uh, access to a big community uh, full of uh, um, uh, or uh, people that are interested in robotics and AI that are posting their projects that are uh, in the field. You can get access to online competitions uh, that you can join and win uh, great prizes uh, by showing off your skills. And then you can also find related products and services on our marketplace. So uh, I hope you have the chance to uh, check out Robocity if you haven't so far. Uh, and actually for the purposes of this um, of this. Uh, a webinar, we will be using Robocity uh, because um, uh, one of the great things that we can do is we have content uh, for you to check out on Robocity. So I will be just using content from Robocity to deliver today's presentation. Okay, so uh, let us begin. Uh, I will start sharing my screen uh, with all of you. So as I mentioned, uh, I will be using Robocity. So if you guys want to be following me and the content, you can also, uh, at the same time as I'm delivering this webinar, you can go on to Robocity. Uh, it's R-O-B-O-C-I-T-I.com. And then you can uh, follow the content and you can um, check out uh, the little mini challenges that will be there to uh, test your knowledge. So um, if uh, you want to do it uh, right now, uh, you'll have some time but uh, I will move forward uh, onto the course. So the um, uh, topic of today's uh, webinar is uh, drones and uh, their applications. So I'm going to be using, uh, let me enter my, uh, let me enter the course so I can show you where to find it guys. So uh, after you create a free account, you can find it in the courses and it's within the free courses that, uh, you can find the introduction to drones. This is the course that we'll be using today. So a little bit about this course before I begin. Uh, with this course, we're going to take a look at uh, some fundamental principles about what drones or uh, as otherwise called unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs are called. Um, we're gonna check out a bit about their evolution, uh, uh, how they progressed from their earlier versions up until the modern versions that are used today or um, some future applications that are being developed right now. Uh, then we're going to uh, take a look at uh, how uh, their features uh, um, can get them to become very useful for a lot of different applications. And then we're going to take a look at these applications uh, that uh, we can see right now, or as I mentioned, are in the uh, research and development stage. And then uh, we're going to see some prospects about the future, how they're developing. Uh, then we can uh, also take a look in some limitations that drones have, uh, meaning uh, some of the uh, still unresolved uh, problems uh, with drones that uh, still can help a lot of you maybe do some research on that or uh, try to create more solutions in these directions. And then some more advantages and disadvantages about drones uh, that, uh, that exist, but also can be resolved uh, with uh, ongoing research on the field. Uh, then as a, as a closing, uh, let's say, remark, we're going to take a look at how the market of drones is growing um, along with all their applications. And then uh, we're going to summarize everything. So. Um, as I said, you had time to uh, check out Robocity if you wanted to follow the content. I'm going to access this, court, this course and I'm going to start with uh, delivering the content of today's uh, webinar. All right, um, as I mentioned, we'll be using um, the online course. So sometimes it will take a little bit of time to uh, load, but it's still quite fast. So um, what we are uh, going to be talking, as I mentioned, is about drones. As you see here, uh, this is more or less the, the basic version of a drone that we all know. Uh, it is a, um, 
it is uh, mainly uh, a flying, uh, let's say, uh, small vehicle. Uh, we'll explain a little bit about its function in, in a bit, but this is more or less the idea that we have about a drone. And we're gonna check out how it evolved into this uh, form, um, its features, applications, uh, pros and cons. And then by the end of this uh, course, uh, by the end of this uh, webinar, you'll also be able to uh, identify some limitations that are still uh, up for uh, open for research uh, for us to improve. And um, later we're gonna also take a look at the market and how it's growing. Okay, let's begin. So, as we mentioned, uh, a drone is also called an unmanned aerial vehicle or UAV. Unmanned, just uh, as the uh, word states, it, it doesn't have a man, like uh, it is not an airplane. It, is, uh, it can have different uh, forms. Um, it can have different shapes, but if you have an unmanned, meaning uh, uh, something that no man is riding on it, uh, an aerial, meaning something that can fly into the air, something that can uh, take off the ground. And it's a vehicle uh, that uh, is not, let's say it can carry uh, some uh, goods. It can even carry humans uh, later as we will see, but um, that goes a little bit against the unmanned, but uh, unmanned in the sense of a pilot in the sense. So if you have this sort of uh, uh, vehicle uh, that can, fly and can um, support an, uh, a non-pilot operation, then you can call it a drone. Um, as we can see, uh, these can uh, fly autonomously, uh, meaning uh, they can be programmed to uh, achieve a trajectory from point A to point B uh, and uh, can fly in natural environments or man-made environments uh, and they are mainly made from different light uh, composite materials uh, in order to increase the maneuverability while flying. That means that uh, we usually want these drones to be as light as possible and to carry as much weight as possible. Um, I can see that some people are leaving comments. Uh, you guys can uh, all leave questions if you want and I will take some time at the end of the, the presentation to answer some of the, the questions uh, to the best of my knowledge. So um, if you want to leave questions uh, for me, or if you have questions uh, during this webinar, you can uh, leave them as, uh, as comments in the chat, and then I'll get back to them in the last more or less 10 minutes of this uh, webinar. Okay, so uh, let's move forward and take a look uh, at some of the steps that led to the current version of the drones as we know them today. So, um, whether you want, whether you know it or not, uh, actually, uh, drones started mainly from military applications, and uh, the first, uh, let's say, introduction of aircrafts for military service was uh, done in 1915 uh, during the the First World War. Um, that's when aircrafts were uh, started to be used uh, for military purposes. But it wasn't until um, it wasn't until 1939 that we had the first remote controlled aircraft um, called the radio plane OQ-2. Um, and it was introduced uh, by the US. So um, we switched from uh, uh, an aircraft that could be controlled by uh, um, a pilot on board to uh, an aircraft that could be remotely controlled for uh, all different purposes. Uh, of course, as we mentioned, the first uh, applications were in the military. So they were used mainly uh, by the army, um, the Air Force actually, to um, maybe carry bombs, of course, or to uh, go and surveil different targets. Um, then in the 70s, uh, in 1973, uh, Israel also developed an unpiloted surveillance uh, machine. Uh, this goes closer a bit to uh, what we think of the uh, more uh, current uh, drone, military drones um, that have the, the long haul uh, that look like an airplane, but they don't have anybody steering the wheel. And they were mainly used again for uh, military uh, purposes. Uh, but uh, in later years, and especially after the 2000s, 
uh, we have a lot of uh, drones that are mainly used for delivery purposes. Uh, in 2014, uh, actually Amazon uh, proposed using a lot of their drones for delivery services, uh, given their uh, popularity for other purposes. Uh, so they had uh, this plan uh, that hasn't been, um, let's say, fulfilled yet, but a lot of the uh, idea, a lot of the thinking started back in uh, uh, early 2000s. And even Amazon had their uh, purpose of creating a fleet of drones that could deliver goods. Uh, smaller, of course, and much simpler than those in the military. That means um, they are not used to carry bombs. They are not used uh, for longer flights, but they're mainly used in a local level. And that's why they could be reduced in uh, size and in structure and complexity of structure. Um, then we had uh, drones for promotional videos. Uh, a lot of the recent applications of drones uh, are for using a camera to, uh, uh, let's say, monitor or take videos or pictures. So a lot of real estate agencies started using drones uh, to make promotional videos of um, uh, houses or resorts or um, other big areas that they wanted to uh, get a better footage of than just from the ground. Um, then afterwards, we had uh, DIY drones. Uh, a lot of organizations started creating smaller uh, drones uh, that were also uh, modularized, meaning they were uh, broken down into pieces that people could actually um, order separately and then build their own drones, uh, commercializing even further this uh, technology. And then uh, we uh, have also seen some applications uh, in recent years uh, for anti-poaching rescue missions, meaning uh, they were mainly used for detecting wildlife and for uh, trying to rescue them from poachers, mainly used in Africa. And also uh, recently, as we mentioned, they have been used uh, for more deliveries. So uh, in a lot of remote locations, they have been used to deliver medicine uh, from uh, one remote location to another. Uh, and lately, um, a lot of um, bigger companies are um, giving more attention to drones. I mean, of course, for, apart from Amazon uh, that uh, is doing a lot of deliveries, even Chinese companies uh, like uh, Jingdon are uh, getting fleets of experimental drones to deliver um, goods. But also uh, drones are uh, infiltrating more applications uh, such as uh, Facebook has started uh, using um, huge solar power drones uh, to uh, beam internet into remote areas, meaning apart from just uh, delivery of goods, apart from just taking videos, now drones are just using their flexibi flexibility, maneuverability, and their, uh, um, let's say, ability to reach remote locations in the things such as internet into these remote locations. Okay, after seeing this sort of evolution, now you have a better understanding that we start from military purposes and then from bigger uh, um, drones, bigger unmanned aerial vehicles, and it's been getting smaller and smaller up until the point it got commercialized. And now we are at a stage where we have, um, let's say, drones that are not bigger than, um, let's say, uh, I mean, this mug or uh, something uh, even smaller, you can have even uh, smaller drones that can fit in the palm of your hand. Uh, but then now it depends on the uh, application that you are using it for. So you can uh, manage to uh, develop different sizes. Okay, so now let us go and see some of the drone features to perform even uh, acrobatic Even used for, let's say, uh, um, entertainment purposes uh, in, at night and even write messages uh, on the sky. So um, these drones uh, are very, very well controlled and have a, a much higher level of precision than in the past. 
Um, then uh, let's go to the right. Uh, we can see that some of the drones uh, can have their own navigation system, uh, meaning uh, apart from just a flight that is stable, you can actually uh, very precisely, uh, as we said, um, plan the trajectory from point A to point B. Uh, and for this uh, purposes, they're using different sensors on board, um, including cameras uh, and other uh, IMU like uh, uh, navigate from one point to the other and for us to very accurately and uh, say, of course, one of the main feature that drones have that made them very popular Lately, uh, is the camera on board. Uh, a lot of uh, drones uh, used for their cameras. Uh, we can have very attractive videos uh, because of this feature. Um, because they are giving us an angle that uh, humans uh, sometimes are impossible. Uh, they don't have the capability of uh, um, seeing from. Okay, uh, next one, uh, we can see that uh, drones uh, have the ability to uh, safely uh, enter a space. Uh, no, uh, this one is about agriculture. As we mentioned, uh, they have different sensors on board uh, that can help them identify uh, different, uh, let's say, uh, characteristics of their components uh, this and the surroundings. So you can see they can have distance sensors on board that can help them stay at the specific uh, distance from different objects, uh, such as these crops. Uh, they have maybe uh, infrared sensors that can help them identify if there are, uh, let's say, um, some uh, illnesses or disease uh, in specific crops. And they can also have GPS uh, systems to help them navigate um, very uh, accurately from one point to the other. And that is why, as we see, they're being used in agricultural uh, purposes uh, and agricultural applications as well. Okay, uh, next one, as we mentioned, they can be controlled from long distances. Um, it is not just uh, the automatic planning that we can do for them if they have the navigation system, but also we can use uh, remote controls uh, remote controllers to uh, be able to um, get them very far away from us or from the locations that we want. And as we mentioned, since they have uh, more advanced versions have GPS systems, they can also be um, uh, remotely controlled from uh, one remote location to another. Uh, and uh, lastly, we can see that uh, drones can enter safely uh, spaces that are potentially dangerous for humans. Uh, for example, a lot of um, applications for drones are for uh, search and rescue, uh, meaning uh, in locations where we have natural disasters that, of course, they don't have high winds because, as we'll see later, high winds are um, also one of the things that drones uh, cannot really tolerate. But in uh, natural disasters such as floods, uh, such as um, maybe some volcano uh, eruptions uh, or uh, even latest that we had some, um, let's say, um, nuclear power plant meltdowns. In these uh, areas, maybe it is um, dangerous for people to uh, um, have access to these areas, but drones can surveil from above and can give us a better depiction of what is going on there in order to uh, even save human lives. Okay, so these are some features that we mentioned uh, for the drones. I'll uh, move ahead to applications because I already mentioned some, but uh, this is a, a better, let's say, representation of all of them. You can have a better and more concise idea. So, uh, first of all, of course, aerial photography and video, as we mentioned, uh, given the cameras that uh, the drones have on board, uh, they can take really high quality videos and photos, uh, and um, they can give a, a better uh, view of what things look from above uh, that is not usually the uh, viewer uh, used to. As I mentioned, search and rescue. Um, a lot of applications have to do with um, 
how you can access locations uh, that may be too small for humans to enter. For example, in a, in a building that is on fire uh, or that has semi-collapsed after earthquakes, drones are used to uh, surveil and give more information to uh, search and rescue uh, staff such as firefighters, and they can even uh, have different sensors to measure gases uh, and see whether they're dangerous for people. Security purposes, um, you can see that uh, you can have some combined applications and drones can be used uh, for um, going around uh, a house and a state and uh, giving alarms uh, whenever there are intruders or uh, take videos uh, for uh, people to understand what happened uh, after maybe uh, some accidents can happen. Um, something that's closely related to that is surveillance. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, a lot of um, purposes in the beginning were for military purposes. So drones have this uh, innate capability of uh, just being used to monitor areas, which is uh, very useful for uh, the army. Uh, so they're just, um, uh, used for uh, checking out whether there is any irregular activity uh, in uh, bases like army bases, but also uh, later in people's houses. Shipping and delivery. This is something that, of course, as we mentioned, is um, a very new and uh, well sought after application. Uh, we said companies like Amazon or even uh, Chinese companies like uh, Jingdong, they are uh, trying to develop fleets uh, to uh, have a lot of goods delivered to people's uh, homes. Um, of course, this is done because um, if you uh, take away um, all these uh, road deliveries, uh, there's a lot of logistics uh, that uh, logistics costs can be reduced uh, if you take to the sky. But of course, um, still regulations about uh, the flight and the safety uh, they haven't been really well established, so it's still um, a, an era where, where we're going to see more advancements in this direction, and we're going to see um, a lot more drones flying the sky, uh, but uh, also governments will try to start regulating this aspect. As we mentioned, agri in agriculture, um, it's a cheap and effective way to monitor crops. Uh, they can uh, detect the crop health improve crop conditions because apart from the sensors, they can also carry fertilizers with which they can spray um, the, um, the crops. And in this way, a, a lot of um, actual research is now being put into using effectively these drones. These drones are already used for agriculture, maybe for uh, watering or spraying pesticides, uh, but now a lot of um, uh, research is also uh, being put in using more uh, AI methodologies to actually detect uh, in a better way the, um, let's say, disease that uh, some crops may have and when they would actually need uh, these uh, sprays. And uh, one last application that is uh, quite important for a lot of geologists uh, is uh, geographic mapping. As we said, um, Drones can have uh, high resolution cameras, but also there are other sensors such as uh, LIDARs or radars that they can carry. And using these sensors, they can manage to create uh, very high quality 3D mappings of uh, a lot of outdoor environments, such as you can see in this picture. Um, and this can also be used later for mapping applications. Okay. Now let us move forward uh, to the next part. This is a mini challenge. Um, this is actually part of the, um, the course here on Robocity. Uh, you can find uh, some questions here that relate to the content that I just explained, that I just talked about. Um, I am not going to spend time uh, to go over the questions. Uh, you can uh, go on Robocity and try to answer the questions yourself yourselves. Um, each time you can also earn some RoboCoins, which is like a digital currency on Robocity uh, that can help you later buy courses um, or um, give to some articles or buy some other equipment. So um, you can check out the questions yourselves uh, if you have time uh, and uh, earn some RoboCoins Robo in the process. Okay, uh, just um, 
some indicative questions of how how the how this works. As we said, you can find a question and then you select an answer and then you submit it. And then if you get uh, five, if you get like uh, the answer correctly on the first try, you get five rubble coins. On the second try, three rubble coins. Uh, from the third time and on, you just only get one rubble coin. So of course, uh, try to get the answer correctly. Um, uh, if you want to earn more rubble coins. Okay, uh, now let's move forward on to the second part of this webinar, which is mainly about uh, some limitations, uh, some, uh, let's say, um, still um, inefficacies of uh, drone technology that, that uh, is being uh, researched on uh, during this period of time, and in which uh, we'll see great developments in the following years. Okay, so let's take a look at some limitations. Um, one of the biggest limitations, of course, is how far our drones can fly, uh, because you have, um, of course, a drone, as we said, for military purposes, they were big drones that carried a lot of fuel uh, in the beginning. Uh, they were powered by fuel, so that gave them the capability of going through uh, much longer distances. Now, a lot of the drones, uh, are uh, using batteries, which uh, limits their uh, flight time. So um, how far a drone can fly uh, can depend on, uh, let's say the, the space that it's flying in, uh, the conditions in this space, uh, the line of sight. Line of sight means if you are remotely controlling your drone, um, how far you can see the drone. And then that is actually uh, your limitation as a human being, uh, but also a lot of uh, its technical features such as uh, the power that is used to, um, so the power source that is used to power the drone and um, some other limitations regarding the technology that is used to remote control it. Um, but uh, the most important thing that we need to understand that right now, uh, a lot of the drones have a limited flight time because of the battery. The battery in a drone is uh, its main power source. As I mentioned in the past, in the bigger drones for military purposes, we had, uh, let's say, uh, use some fuel uh, and they were mainly resembling the uh, let's say airplanes, the aircrafts, but modern drones are mainly using electric circuits and they are uh, powered by batteries. Uh, so especially for commercial purposes, you will probably only see uh, let's say, uh, battery-powered uh, drones. So um, we have um, the common lithium-ion batteries that are used for a lot of devices uh, in our everyday lives, even our cell phones, uh, that can give um, flight times between 8 to 15 minutes uh, before you need to recharge the battery. Uh, but a lot of, um, let's say, uh, research is being done on new materials and uh, some, let's say, new materials such as lithium metal batteries or lithium polymer batteries are, um, are actually being able to uh, perform a bit better. So a lot of uh, research is being done uh, in improving the, the flight time of drones by just improving the battery. Uh, some limitations regarding the battery as well is that um, a lot of these batteries are also a fire risk. Uh, and sometimes they have been shown to catch fire uh, while they're charging or if punctured. So uh, on the drone, um, it uh, has its own limitations about uh, safety. Uh, so a lot of research is also done uh, in making the drones a bit safer uh, by using different materials for the batteries. Because as we said, if we're going to go into uh, drone deliveries of goods, uh, we need a uh, quite safe uh, way to uh, get these drones flying around in urban environments uh, and uh, uh, maybe transporting some, uh, maybe even more dangerous goods. Okay, next one is about their maximum speed. Right now, most drones have a maximum speed of about 50 kilometers an hour. They usually can't go faster with uh, current technology. Um, and if you even add uh, some uh, environmental factors such as uh, wind speeds. Uh, if you uh, try to fly a drone under very high winds, uh, we said that that can even be impossible. Uh, and uh, you can just use them with speeds of winds 
uh, less than 30 kilometers an hour. If it goes more than 30 kilometers an hour uh, of wind, then uh, you can not fly your drones. Uh, and that is a great limitation in terms of uh, long distance travels um, and long distance deliveries of goods. Uh, but still, um, a lot of uh, research is being done to improve these parameters and to make them even more robust. Um, one uh, thing that I just mentioned uh, before is the line of sight. That means uh, you can usually, if you're remotely controlling a drone, you can usually only fly it until the point that you can see it. So that is a limitation of its own, unless the, the drone has autonomous uh, flying methods. So a lot of the, let's say, modern drones also have these sort of autonomous uh, flying uh, modes that just go directly up to a specific distance from the initial point, uh, maybe take a video and then come back. Um, also, um, as I mentioned, uh, some of the radio frequency that is being used uh, for remotely controlling the robots has also its limitations. So um, there is a specific range up to which uh, a, a, an RC, like a remote controller, can uh, to uh, try to improve all of these parameters. Well, let's move forward on to some pros and cons. Of course, drones have a lot of advantages uh, and that is why they're becoming even more popular in, in recent times. Uh, they are easy to build, um, especially their newer versions. Uh, as I mentioned, they are much smaller in size. They have a much higher ratio of the weight they can carry towards uh, their own weight. Um, uh, and so it is much easier uh, for us to construct them uh, with simpler uh, modules. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, there are also the DIYs like uh, do-it-yourself uh, drones that you can get different modules and combine them and uh, have your own drone. You don't need to uh, only uh, wait for commercial drones or buy uh, an entire drone um, in order to, to have a drone. Um, well, the next one is can save lives. As we mentioned, a lot of uh, drones are being used for, um, say, uh, delivery of uh, very uh, fragile goods uh, in remote locations in Africa, for example, or other destinations, even in Europe. Uh, there are testings of um, blood delivery by drones um, and uh, they manage to uh, deliver vaccines or they manage to deliver a lot of uh, other uh, medicine that is very vital for the survival of some people in some remote locations uh, with the drones. So that is why we say they can save lives. But apart from this, as we mentioned in the, uh, like in the search and rescue applications, they can go into locations that humans cannot and can uh, managed to provide information about uh, how to save some humans from uh, endangered, endangered locations. Okay, next we said the delivery systems can operate much faster. Um, we just mainly uh, referred to how they can uh, save a lot of um, money uh, and time uh, from logistic solutions that exist right now. And that is what um, we're, that's why we said like Amazon and other big uh, um, e-commerce services are trying to build their fleets. Uh, they can easily make 3D maps of landscapes as we saw earlier uh, using their stories, they can create these. Um, they make agriculture more efficient without the use of um, people going to check these locations. But as we said, this is still an ongoing uh, research on how to make it even better. They can capture incredible moments in sports. Um, that means um, a lot of drones are actually used now in a lot of sports uh, competitions uh, to get a better view, to, <clears throat> to be able to uh, capture um, things that maybe referees can see even in football or um, other sports. 
And lastly, they can uh, survey dangerous places, as we mentioned. They can go in through uh, smaller holes. They can go in through windows. So they can give us a better um, understanding of uh, some locations that are not easy for us. But I think most important, uh, we need to take a little bit a uh, look at the cons, some disadvantages. Um, and they are connected to the limitations that we uh, mentioned earlier. So um, if you're looking into uh, following a career in drones or like are trying to create something, um, maybe you can think about solutions uh, to these uh, problems that uh, the drone technology has up to this date. Uh, first of all, they can be easily affected by change of weather. That is a, a very fundamental problem for drones but not only for drones, for anything that is flying in the air. If there are very strong winds, if there is very heavy rain, uh, snowfall, hail, uh, all of these can actually bring a drone down. So um, you can uh, think of ways in which to improve this. Uh, for example, making the drones uh, bigger uh, or having automated ways in which the way in which the drones can sense the weather and then try to find shelter in these situations. But this is a constant uh, disadvantage of using drone technology for applications. Uh, then we have accidents that can easily occur uh, because um, the drones may lose control. And in this way, they could hurt somebody or damage their properties. Um, there are a lot of incidents uh, with drones actually uh, missing their uh, landing spots uh, or uh, I don't know, is there anything wrong? I can see somebody waving, maybe. Can you guys verify that you're hearing me correctly? Um, Screen is visible, but okay, we can, okay. As long as you can hear me guys, then I will continue. All right. Uh, then as I was saying, um, accidents may happen and it's actually being proven. Uh, a lot of, um, as I mentioned, regulator, regulatory uh, efforts are being made to see uh, who is to blame if a drone falls from the sky onto somebody or if, uh, a drone drops its package onto uh, a car or uh, even a house. So all of these damages that could occur because um, drones still are not 100% reliable um, are problems. Uh, okay. Somebody is trying to annotate. All right, I will continue. Uh, so as I was saying, um, uh, this is something that is quite open. Uh, a lot of, as I mentioned, um, regulations are still not in place and that is why we're not seeing drones uh, much closer to us. Um, one third threat is their vulnerability to hackers. As we mentioned, um, mainly a lot of uh, simple drones are just remotely controlled by, um, let's say, a remote controller. So this is not that easy to, ha to hack. Still, you can uh, jump onto that radio frequency and still take control of the drone. Uh, but if we're, <clears throat> if we're talking now, <clears throat> if we're talking now about uh, fleets of drones automatically um, uh, completing these deliveries from uh, point A to point B in a massive scale, this can only be done through uh, automation of this process. So these drones are uh, going to be using uh, their GPS locations and they are going to be um, automatically managed by a, let's say, a greater management system that tracks their locations and optimizes their trajectories. So uh, since we are talking about automated procedures and about, uh, let's say, this sort of uh, programming that is controlling these drones, we have the, the eminent danger of uh, hackers. And that is something that um, a lot of, uh, let's say, drone-related uh, research is going to how to secure the communications between drones and their uh, 
let's say, base or drones and the satellites or drones or uh, between other drones. So this is something that is also gaining a lot of traction and research, how to uh, secure these systems of drones uh, and how to make sure that hackers cannot attack them and take control of them. Um, then, uh, of course, anything that flies can interact with anything else that flies. Uh, so in airports or railways, uh, we can have uh, a lot of drones that are, um, if you have like a lot of drones uh, that are flying in urban locations closer to airports, that can create a lot of problems, uh, not only with the, let's say danger or of falling onto drones or falling onto other aircrafts, but also from the danger of uh, confusing the control centers, because uh, as you know, there are a lot of um, control centers uh, in airports that are uh, regulating the, the air traffic. So if you have a lot of uh, drones flying around in an uncontrolled way, this can actually make their job much harder and they can create accidents even with uh, airplanes. Um, then we say they will take away job opportunities. Um, as we mentioned uh, in other um, work, uh, other webinars and other presentations, uh, if you have uh, something that is automating some processes, uh, for example, here we have uh, drones that are going into agriculture. You, you, of course, will have people that used to work in the fields for this, let's say, spraying or uh, this fertilization of crops that may lose their jobs. Um, of course, this is something that um, is inevitable when you're trying to automate a lot of processes, uh, but it can also create some other jobs uh, in terms of these controllers of these drones, uh, because uh, still we're not in the phase that uh, they can be used 100% autonomously and they may still need somebody to check on them. So sure, uh, there is um, a fear and an actual possibility that they can uh, automate some processes that uh, earlier used to use humans, uh, but this is uh, the natural way of, of going forward with technology. So um, this is not a, a very big fear uh, in this sense. Um, they can be used to hunt animals. Um, of course, uh, if you have seen maybe some episodes of, uh, let's say, Black Mirror or some uh, other science fiction shows, they show some of these drones being used to um, carry weapons or, or uh, being able to, um, let's say, kill. Uh, also, some sometimes they, uh, some uh, images circulated the internet a few years ago uh, about some uh, people adjusting guns onto drones. Uh, I think it was in the States, but um, it is not only about hunting animals, it is like the, the general danger of having the drones going into different locations uh, much freely. Um, so um, it could also be used to hunt animals, but it could also pose a danger in human life. It is not regulated properly. And lastly, they can fly over to prohibited areas. Um, this has been uh, a main trouble for the military applications, of course, uh, because this is the main way that uh, a lot of um, armies have been working with espionage or trying to uh, get images of locations that uh, should not be surveilled. So. Of course, this is a capability of drones. Uh, they can fly to locations that are hard to reach, but it can also be used for criminal activities to surveil areas that uh, are uh, under secrecy. So um, these are some, I'll say, risks coming together with drones that we need to consider. And as I mentioned, a lot of research is done on how to deal with these. So if you're also looking forward into working with drones, maybe you can uh, start by doing some research into these directions. Okay, let's move forward uh, with common drone designs and their structure. Um, here we will see, um, based on uh, the sales of drones, um, we have chosen to present to you some of the most uh, popular drone designs. And as you can see, three of the most popular drone designs, they are all produced by one company called DJI. It is a Chinese company. And uh, it's uh, the world leader in commercial drone uh, manufacturing and distribution. Uh, so uh, their main model is called the Mavic. Uh, and the most uh, successful in sales so far is the Mavic Air 2. And then uh, following that is 
no other company's drones is still uh, DJI drones uh, called Mavic 2 Pro and Mavic Mini. Uh, so they have differences in size and uh, some capabilities. But the main design, as you can see, in terms of structure is very similar. So I'll just analyze very briefly the structure of, of this drone. As you can see, the drone has its main body uh, where you can you mainly attach the sensors and the camera. Uh, they usually always have the camera in the front to uh, perform the surveillance and the recording of the uh, pictures and videos. Uh, under the, the main hull, you have the battery or usually it's also placed here in the back. So it's uh, detachable. So you can take the battery, charge it and replace it quite easily. Um, the GPS unit is also placed uh, in the back and the electronics, they are housed inside the main body of the, the drone. So you cannot have access to them. If you have a DYI, a sort of module, you can uh, take a look at the inner, uh, let's say structure of uh, the electronics and the sensor arrangement. But usually for commercial uh, drones, you don't get to see inside. The only things you get to see are detachable battery, um, the different sensors that can be on the front and the camera. Then apart from the main body of the drone, uh, you have the arms that extend in uh, different directions. Uh, this is a quadricopter, meaning it has four copters. Copters are the uh, propellers here that you see uh, on each of uh, at the end of each arm. And they are mainly uh, used, of course, to uh, help the drone fly. They rotate in very high speeds and help the drone fly. Um, one uh, very important component to understand is like most of the uh, motors uh, that are used for the drones are housed right under the propellers. Uh, so they are just at the ends of these arms. And then one other important component um, is down here. Uh, these are the legs or the uh, little, um, let's say, um, stands on which the drone will, uh, will uh, land on in order to not uh, land on the main uh, body. So uh, we always have these uh, uh, sort of little extensions so that the drone can land on these uh, much more easily. Okay, so let me just um, write one more time. This is the main body right here. Then we have um, a detachable battery right here in the back. Uh, the camera is right over here. and other sensors are usually put in the front. As we said, we have the legs on each direction and we have the propellers. These are the propellers or copters as they are called. So this is a four copter one, it's called quadrocopter. There are hexacopters uh, if they have six and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, as I mentioned, the, there's no big difference between these very successful, the, the most popular drones. They all have very similar structure. It's just this one, specifically the Mini, is a much smaller uh, size. It's uh, the size, uh, if the, the arms are folded in, it's just the size more or less of a cell phone, of a, of a big a cell phone or a small tablet. Um, okay. After we've seen a little bit uh, about the structure of the drones, uh, let's move forward uh, with some information about the drone market. Uh, I won't give too much information because there's a lot of data to be uh, studied, but um, the drone market uh, actually uh, is about 100 billion uh, US dollars globally, and it's growing really rapidly. Uh, about uh, 70 billion of this market is mainly in military applications. Uh, so as we mentioned, um, the beginning of drones was in military, but still the uh, most, let's say, um, funds or uh, where the most money in drones is, is still in the military of about 70 billion. And that uh, we still have bigger drones that are used for surveillance or even bombing purposes, <clears throat> reconnaissance, or transportation of goods 
for the military. Then we have consumer drones, such as the ones that we saw for recreation, taking videos uh, or um, used for other, um, let's say applications such as um, uh, this uh, small deliveries uh, of medicine. Uh, these um, take about 17 billion uh, US dollars and business and civil governments uh, have about 13 billion US dollars uh, from this market. Um, the, the market is growing really fast. The, the revenue of companies uh, from 2020 to 2025 is, is uh, growing uh, still quite fast from about 22 uh, billion, uh, from 22 billion. that have to do with drone technology. And um, uh, this has a, a growth rate of about 13.8% uh, a year over year. So this is um, quite impressive in terms of uh, this industry is still growing really fast and it's expected to, to grow really fast. And especially uh, in Asia, North America and Europe, the applications are uh, growing really fast and they're still expected to grow um, much faster. Um, in um, South America, uh, uh, let's say Africa and uh, Oceania, uh, the, the progress is quite slower, uh, but it's still there. But as you can see, uh, the other three continents are already building applications and using them. So the progress is already quite fast. Uh, okay, so more or less we completed um, some information about the market. Um, next, you can uh, take some time if you're on Robosity to do the next mini challenge and the next uh, three questions. I won't spend time on this. I will just move forward on to the course summary because we're all almost out of just part of the autonomous urban, urban aircraft market meaning um, apart from uh, the drones, the drone technology can also be used in the future uh, in uh, unmanned uh, taxis, uh, like driverless aerial taxis, or uh, for other applications um, such as uh, military uh, or um, let's say weather stations, as we saw earlier. So um, a lot of the applications are still uh, under development and the market is still growing. And uh, just as a small uh, fact, um, the entire autonomous urban aircraft uh, industry is expected to become uh, a $1.5 trillion industry by 2040, is a fact that I just uh, have down here. Okay, so uh, let's uh, now spend some time uh, to recap what we saw. So, a second. So, we saw that uh, some features of the drones are that they can take aerial photography and video with the cameras. They can join search and rescue missions by uh, making, uh, making it into locations that are hard for humans to reach. Uh, they can be used in security and surveillance. Uh, they can be used in delivery of goods, although we said there are still some issues with that in agriculture by surveilling crops or even using fertilizers on them and for 3D mapping of uh, greater geographical locations. Uh, we saw that their evolution um, started mainly from military applications after the uh, first aircrafts were used by the military. Uh, but in the last 20 years, we have seen them uh, growing in popularity for consumer applications, uh, such as uh, for, dro for uh, goods delivery. Um, they're being used uh, for agriculture, or they are now even smaller in size, and you can even have, um, let's say, DIY modularized drones that people, uh, consumers can use, uh, can can actually build on their own. And uh, that may create some dangers for uh, from a regulation point of view, but this is the state uh, that we are right now in terms of commercialization. Uh, features of drones, as we said, they, they have a very stable flight. Uh, they can capture uh, videos with their cameras. They can be controlled from long distances they have navigational systems so that they can be um, moved from one point to the other without human intervention. Uh, they uh, have sensors to identify materials or 
um, to identify even let's say illnesses and crops uh, and they can reach places which are dangerous for humans. They can go in through smaller uh, holes or they can go to um, places that humans cannot go, go to after natural disasters. Uh, pros and cons, as we said, uh, they can have faster delivery, uh, save logistics costs uh, by this way. They can create 3D maps and they can capture photos and videos. Uh, these are some of the major prone, uh, advantages, uh, but as we said, some disadvantages are that they, um, they we still are not 100% uh, sure that we can control them reliably, so accidents can happen easily. A lot of drones have uh, been falling uh, out of the sky onto people's properties or onto people. They still have the possibility to be hacked uh, if they are autonomized, so um, we still need to spend resources on this uh, direction to make them uh, even safer. And they, uh, a major drawback is that they can be affected by the weather. So we need to find ways in order to make them more reliable, even in harsher weather conditions. And uh, as we mentioned, the drones market is growing really fast uh, and is revolutionizing a lot of uh, other uh, industries, uh, such as we said, agriculture, uh, logistics, um, apart from the military, a lot of uh, other, um, let's say, even telecommunications, as we said, for uh, carrying signals uh, to other locations, to remote locations. And the entire industry of autonomous urban aircraft is growing really fast, is expected to reach 1.5 trillion uh, USD uh, by 2040. Okay, so more or less, uh, this uh, summarizes our, um, our webinar for today. Uh, I will take a look at some of the questions that you may have put in the chat and I will try to uh, answer them briefly. Um, and uh, let's take a look right now. Um, you can still ask questions if you have them. Okay, I still cannot see questions. Let me go forward. My question, okay, a question from Toby uh, Balogun um, says his question is, what do you think represents the next frontier or for commercial uh, drone usage? I understand there are breakthroughs in speed uh, with a new DJI drone that goes at 93 miles per hour with 4K FPS, 60 FPS camera. What do you think is the next groundbreaking frontier in commercial drone manufacture? Okay, so, um, this is, of course, um, uh, thank you, Toby, for your question. Um, this is, of course, open to interpretation. Uh, uh, my understanding is that, uh, of course, uh, companies like DJI are leading the way in creating faster and more robust uh, drones. Uh, I would say that, um, first of all, some of the uh, groundbreaking uh, uh, reach fronts right now, as I mentioned, is the uh, use for drones for agriculture. So it is not about making the drone, uh, let's say, faster or getting a very, um, let's say, uh, reliable or fast camera, uh, because these are, are still in the recreational space. Uh, meaning you can you can use them for recreational space for recreational purposes, but um, now we're we're trying to see how to use drones for a lot of more substantial applications. So um, a lot of uh, research is being put, and a lot of um, let's say companies are trying to achieve uh, let's say a, a better integration of sensors onto drones that are still reliable and fast. And can, and can go into longer distances. So as I mentioned, uh, and being battery technology for drones is very, very vital in order to have drones uh, servicing uh, uh, more remote locations. Um, and then uh, the, integration of, uh, the integration of sensors on board a drone is very important in order to make it more uh, useful for applications. So it's not only a camera, a camera is, is of course good and um, a lot of the the information from the camera is being analyzed by a lot of uh, modern AI techniques. For example, uh, neural networks are taking into consideration how crops look and are trying to analyze if they are, um, say, healthy or not. 
uh, but we need a lot more sensors uh, for let's say different applications. So um, the idea is that a lot of manufacturers are um, working with some uh, startups in order to target specific applications. Again, I won't say uh, only about, I won't talk only about agriculture, but uh, let's say there are applications for uh, goods delivery that uh, require a specific workload or they require uh, the drone to know if actually what I mentioned, the weather is becoming um, harsher or if the conditions are, uh, let's say, unsuitable uh, for flight. And in that way, they could take shelter. So as I mentioned, you need to have a specific, um, let's say, sensor integration. So this is something that is the next step for uh, manufacturers that want to create drones for uh, different uh, commercial applications. Okay, um, I see a question by Harsh. Uh, uh, he says, how can drones be used in cybersecurity? Okay, um, drones uh, can be used in security in terms of, let's say, surveilling areas. So this is one way to use drones for security purposes, but I am not really sure if the question is about this or um, what are the needs of, for drones for cybersecurity. So I'm going to answer a little bit about what I mentioned about hacking drones, um, because you have a lot of drones that are very simple in, in their form. They can just be controlled by a remote control. So um, you can still hijack a drone uh, in this condition if you uh, actually transmit a signal in the same radio frequency and uh, you can block out a signal from uh, the original controller. So that is one way that a hacker can um, hijack the radio frequency. But the more modern, uh, let's say drones that I have uh, mentioned that are being used in, in larger scale applications such as delivery or um, even the um, drones that are used for uh, crop uh, surveillance or drones that are used for um, let's say uh, search and rescue they are not uh, only controlled by the radio frequency they are controlled by uh, maybe uh, 4g or 5g signals or satellite uh, signals so um, these uh, drones can be also hacked, their protocols can be hacked by uh, people on the same network. Uh, so it is very important to create uh, high levels of uh, cybersecurity for ensuring that these drones will not uh, be controlled by, let's say the wrong, uh, the wrong parties. So um, I think I kind of uh, answered this uh, question. Um, if I didn't, you can uh, follow up because this is more or less what I understood from this question. Um, I have a question from Adetotun. Um, he asked, drones have an average uh, flight of uh, 15 minutes. Can they be equipped with more tougher batteries like those of laptops? So um, I already put a small slide in the presentation. Um, let me go back to that. Um, is it here? Um, in the limitations, I think it's here. So um, as you can see here uh, in this image, um, yes, if you're using uh, very uh, standard lithium iron, iron batteries, uh, their time of flight is about 15 uh, to 18 minutes. Um, of course, you can uh, equip a drone with bigger batteries and that will extend its, um, let's say, time of flight. But there's always a trade-off uh, between the weight of the battery and the size of the battery and the size of the drone. So yes, um, bigger drones that are meant to carry heavier loads uh, can be equipped with bigger batteries because they have higher needs in power. Uh, for smaller commercial drones, um, we still use, uh, let's say, commercial drones that are, uh, they don't need to carry a lot of things, they just need to fly. Uh, we still use the, the very standard lithium ion batteries, but as I mentioned, there is research in uh, battery uh, materials, and a lot of people are, are now trying to uh, go into this direction, so they're using some lithium, uh, lithium metal batteries which are a bit different than the lithium ion ones or the lithium polymer batteries that can increase this uh, life. So one thing is the material. 
uh, that you can use to uh, improve the, the the lifespan of the battery and the time flight, the time of flight, or you can uh, have bigger batteries. But uh, bigger batteries also uh, have bigger weights, so they can actually um, make your uh, drone again not fly uh, to greater, let's say, lengths or uh, durations because uh, it needs to support the weight. So there's always a trade-off to consider. Okay, I'll go to the next question. Um, I will only answer two more questions because our time is running out. Um, next question is from Paul. How do drones uh, transmit data in remote locations where there is no internet? Uh, in the context of military or rescue operations where real-time feedback is important, how do they deal with these issues? So in remote locations, um, actually um, you need to consider uh, where your robot is flying, where your drone is flying. Well, as I said, robot, like a drone is, is a kind of robot. So I'll just go ahead and say it is not wrong to use the word uh, robot for a drone, but uh, let's say the special uh, category of drones. So um, how do they uh, transmit uh, data in remote locations where there is no internet? So if you know that your drone is, is uh, going through a location where there, there are no internet signals such as 4G or 5G, um, then you have to get your drone to uh, communicate with satellite signals. So uh, of course, GPS is a way to, um, let's say communicate just for the location, but you can also have, um, uh, let's say uh, location, uh, you can also have communication with satellite signals for your drone. So mainly uh, they are using satellite based signals. Um, in the context of military or rescue operations where real time feedback is important, how do they deal with these issues? Of course, um, uh, let's say uh, 4G or 5G is, is faster than satellite signals, but satellite signals can be, um, let's say, still uh, quite fast, uh, though they are more expensive in terms of like the cost of using uh, these signals and having, let's say, these service uh, provided by satellites. So you can do it and still the, the speed can achieve high rates, but you have to consider the cost in this direction. Uh, you mentioned battery life is an issue. Do you think that, okay, one last question uh, from Conard uh, because our time is running out. You mentioned, you mentioned battery life is an issue. Do you think that the focus of solar powered drones should be taken more seriously and what approach should uh, be taken to accomplish this? Okay, so I uh, showed you a slide in the, um, uh, in the evolution of drones uh, that I mentioned that Facebook is already researching a lot of uh, um, like solar powered drones. Uh, and I definitely consider that this is a uh, way forward because um, we need to harness the power uh, of the sun in order to make them a bit more sustainable because um, battery life, as I mentioned, is an issue. Um, so um, I think that a lot of um, research is done about um, uh, actually adapting uh, solar cells on the drones. The only problem is that the conversion rate is still like not as high as we would wish for drones to still fly autonomously for a long time. So um, as the uh, solar panel technology also improves, uh, then I think we will have better chances of seeing uh, solar, uh, power, um, solar powered drones. Um, but uh, what approach should be taken to accomplish this? As I said, you can uh, usually have a more hybrid solution, still have a battery uh, and then um, have it charged. And maybe you can have a solar uh, panel on top of the drone that uh, slowly replenishes uh, some of the, um, let's say, uh, power that is lost during the flight. Uh, but as I said, right now, it cannot directly power a drone um, that can carry things. Uh, right now, maybe it still can, uh, you can still use some of the power uh, produced by a solar panel to power uh, a very light drone, but if you want it to be used for commercial applications, uh, you still need to have, um, let's say, uh, more power in the sense than uh, what a solar panel can provide at this stage. Of course, more solutions are being researched on, and of course, I am... Um, 
also in favor of research into this direction. Um, okay, guys, I see that uh, there is uh, there are two more questions. Uh, I will maybe see if I can answer them by chat, but uh, our time for today's webinar is up. So I want to thank everybody uh, for uh, sticking around uh, and uh, learning some few, few things with us. Uh, and uh, we're welcoming you to take a look at the course on Robosity uh, and uh, uh, check out the content um, and get back to it. And if you want to review it, answer the questions, get some RoboCoins. And then uh, we welcome everybody to join uh, future workshops and future webinars by Popular Robotics and Robosity. So thank you everyone for taking part and uh, hope to see you uh, in our future events. Bye-bye.